I very much believe in the power of museums to inspire people. People may come to the Met to look at Impressionist paintings or Egyptian mummies, but maybe they wander into the Asian galleries and they see something that they never had thought about before. It might change their life. It changed mine. So I started working at the Metropolitan Museum in 1971. At the time, the only Asian art on view in the museum were ceramics around the Great Hall balcony and one room of early Chinese Buddhist sculpture. Since that time, the museum has added over 50 galleries of Asian art. It's the most comprehensive collection of Asian art anywhere. The Chinese art has also grown tremendously over this time. We've grown in our staff, in our collections, and in our galleries. Starting in 1980, we built a Chinese-style garden courtyard for the installation of a collection of Ming Dynasty furniture. And around either side of the court, we opened galleries of Chinese painting. When we opened those painting galleries, we didn't have enough paintings of high quality to rotate even once. And because Chinese paintings are done on paper and silk, which are light sensitive, it was important to be able to rotate. But as soon as we opened the galleries, a major collector walked in and said, at last, a space big enough for my collection. And he promised us over 200 masterpieces. Many of the things were first collected by either Zhang Daqian or Wang Jiqian, both of whom are artists but also formed important collections of early Chinese art. And those collections were either purchased or donated to the Met uh, in the, starting in the 1970s. And so ironically, the Met, even though we were very weak in Chinese art for many years, the quality of our paintings now and calligraphy really is first rate and it's thanks to these early connoisseurs. The museum now has over 16 galleries of Chinese art with some, uh, I guess we have a, over maybe seven, 800 pieces on view at any given time. In the last uh, decade, we have made an effort to bring the past down to the present. We are collecting contemporary works of art, but particularly those works that resonate with the past, that draw on tradition, maybe they challenge tradition, but you really have a sense that the artists whom we've collected are looking at the past critically and also very intelligently to really pose new questions of themselves and of that tradition. We also like to bring together arts of different media. So one of the exhibitions that I'm most proud of is one in which I selected 34 works of painting and calligraphy from the Metz collection and put them in our gallery space, which normally holds 60 or 70 paintings. And alongside of the works of art, I put photographic enlargements of details. And it was so striking to me as a way of seeing paintings more clearly that we actually did a book. And it's called How to Read Chinese Paintings. The Met is truly encyclopedic in its ambitions, but I've discovered over time that there are many areas that we've neglected. Folk arts, for example, different kinds of uh, textile arts. Uh, the scholar's studio is an area that we're weak in. There are many areas of later Chinese painting, starting with the Yangzhou eccentrics in the 18th century, uh, Haipai, the school from Shanghai, from the late 19th, early 20th century. Uh, so if we're to present Chinese art in a truly complete way, there are many areas where we need to do a better job. About 85% of the Met's collection has been donated by private individuals. Their, our collection is a reflection of their taste. So that's why we have so many Qing Dynasty ceramics. We have very few ceramics from the Yuan Dynasty. 
Uh, we have very little uh, from the early Ming Dynasty. These are terribly expensive works of art now, so we may never be able to acquire them. But these are things that we want to work at slowly adding to the collection so that when people come, they want to show off the development of, let's say, blue and white ceramics from early Yuan down to the Qianlong era. Uh, they can do so with our collection. What I most hope is that we will be able to encourage collectors to help us. And I hope someday beyond America, maybe even in China, there'll be collectors who say, you know, it's important for Chinese art to be seen by a global audience. It's important for people who may never come to China to somehow understand Chinese culture through works of art. I think art is a great ambassador and China has a great history of art. So my goal is to make that history as clear as possible with the best possible quality possible. So people come away and say Chinese culture is really important part of world culture.